In today's video, we're going to be taking a big look here at the tropics where we do have post-tropical cyclone Felipe here. We also have another potential disturbance on the way. As far as the upcoming pattern for the lower 48, we also have a lot of storminess on the way throughout the Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, and into the Northeast, as well as for the deeper Southeast. We're going to be talking about that in a little bit. Yesterday, we posted a long-range video. So it's been a couple days since we've updated you guys. But that cool down that we expected, and still obviously because it's happening today into tomorrow, is not really expected to end anytime soon. Uh, over the next 10 days, almost every single day is going to be cold. There is a brief, brief warm up, maybe about a day, day and a half time frame for the east. And then another major Arctic blast moves right in. And we also have some long range guidance to show you guys that is suggesting very, very cold air could last at least through the end of October. So we're going to be talking about all of that today. Be sure to check out Prestige Weather in the description and pinned comment down below. It's only $5 a month and we do early access to our monthly and seasonal outlooks. We also do weekly consulting calls and other consulting services within our exclusive community. So check it out today. Let's get into things. And as you can see, we do have, again, post-tropical cyclone Felipe expected to remain at about tropical storm status as a post-tropical cyclone. So that means the winds are above tropical storm status. But this one is not very tropical anymore. So it's going to be a lot more like a nor'easter, a very windy nor'easter. And this one is expected by tomorrow morning to hit the coast of Maine. That is the current expectation. Eastern Canada is going to be impacted by this one as well. So we'll talk about that on the upcoming pattern segment of the video in just a little bit. As we take a look at the overall tropics, we can see not a whole lot else is going on here. Other than this disturbance here in our MDR, which is short for Maine Development Region. And that is that area just offshore of uh, Africa and take that all the way to the Caribbean. That is the MDR. And we do see this is a code red. So we have a 20% chance of development over the next 48 hours, which is relatively low, obviously. But through the next seven days, we have a 70% chance of development. So much more chance than not that we end up seeing this one develop. Definitely going to be a very, very interesting situation to say the least and we're going to be watching it very closely here on the channel let's just move on to the upcoming pattern and as you can see right off the bat for this afternoon we see a lot of storminess around for the eastern seaboard back through the ohio valley and great and uh yeah great lakes so we're seeing plenty of storms around for this area as we reach just later on today what we see is that felipe is going to be approaching the coast of maine here so we see it right there offshore of Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and Maine, heading almost directly northward there. Also note the jet stream here doing something about like this. So a very steep trough, and it's uh, a very intense looking one here for the east. And this is going to bring far below normal temperatures that we need to talk about in a second. We'll move into the temperature segment in just a little bit. Let's keep going and take a look at the day kind of like late afternoon here on Sunday, October 8th. And we continue to see something along these lines. So this is pretty much what we're seeing. A lot of cooler air moving all the way towards the East Coast in the Southeast, Mid-Atlantic, and Northeast here. So certainly this is going to be a very, very potent cool down, the coldest air of the season. For Monday here, on October 9th, what we end up seeing is this cooldown does not want to move or go anywhere anytime soon. This is just going to be hanging out, really, for the most part. So we're going to see this one just really not wanting to go anywhere. Uh, as it's sitting overhead, we see this very strong positive PNA as well. So this is helping to support this colder pattern. That was a terrible arrow, by the way. So we see warm air surging out west and this causes all the cold air that would normally be in Canada to move eastward and then southward to kind of counteract and, and kind of balance out the whole pattern if that makes sense. So that is why this PNA out west is so crucial for the upcoming pattern. For Tuesday, October 10th, we see something like this. Plenty of storms moving onshore to the northwest. That is going to be a big theme as we move forward. So we're going to be watching closely for that still some cooler air in the east by Tuesday, even by Wednesday here. What we end up seeing is a rocky mountain snowstorm here. So Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, Nevada, down through Colorado. We're seeing plenty of snowfall for the mountaintops and rainfall for the lower elevation areas. Even the Cascade Mountains back in Washington and Oregon, we're seeing very, very similar conditions. 
Note that we also have some potential tropical activity here developing in the Gulf of Mexico, and this would cause a lot of precipitation all the way through back into a lot of areas in Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, Florida, and into Georgia. Let's keep going. And by the time we reach Thursday, October 12th, what we see is that there is a lot of storms there for Florida, Georgia, South Carolina as a result of this. We see a 992 millibar low pressure center developing here over Kansas. And this is one of those days where the jet stream is doing something like this. So there is still some decently cold air, especially in the northeast. But we do get this little bit of a southeast ridge briefly here. And we see cold air diving southward for the Rockies. And what this allows for is we see this low here and then we get continued snowfall for states like Wyoming and Colorado. So this could bring some pretty heavy snowfall totals. Friday, October 13th here, what we see is a 992 over Iowa, Missouri, Illinois. And this is a pretty strong low. We end up getting plenty of rainfall as a result of this for surrounding states, as you can see. This is going to be pretty potent. And the other thing is that it's going to feature a bit of a cold front. And this is going to be what's the catalyst for our next cool down. As this moves through, we're going to see cold air fill in behind. Still warmth surging to the east, but this is going to really quickly by Saturday the 14th move towards the east coast. We see a kind of double low pattern here, and what we end up seeing is a lot of this energy transfers to the offshore low here. So this becomes our primary low, the one I'm underlining here. And this one's really going to take over. We're seeing the, the shared energy really just transfer all the way offshore. This is very, very common, especially in the wintertime uh, and the fall time. Hence why it's happening right now. So we're seeing this become a little bit more of a nor'easter uh, over time. And by Sunday, we see a pretty strong nor'easter here, 991, right about New York City area. And we see a lot of precipitation as a result of this. Since we see that transfer of energy in that double low, like I mentioned, we're going to see a lot of this precipitation stay pretty far west for a while here through Sunday and even into Monday, where this low has become a 989 there offshore of the northeast. Still a very strong low, and now we see a jet stream pattern, something like this. So colder air for the east here, and warmer air still for the west there. Again, we'll take a look at the temperature pattern in just a little bit, and that continues all the way through the model run. Let's take a look at our total precipitation here, and no surprise, we get quite a bit here for the Pacific Northwest, quite a bit from this tropical activity here for the southeast, but the biggest area where we're seeing the most widespread above average precipitation is gonna be this area shaped kind of like an avocado, uh, just like this, where we see these storms moving across. Again, some nor'easters developing offshore. Uh, we saw one of these lows, even it's actually Felipe, the remnants of Felipe move into Eastern Canada. So we see a very far sweeping above normal precipitation pattern for a lot of these areas. So very active in the upcoming pattern, stronger lows. So it's gonna be the areas that get hit by these are gonna see a lot and the areas that get missed are not gonna see much of anything. Unlike the summertime where, you know, if we were taking a look at a 10 day period, odds are most states are gonna see some form of thunderstorms at some point. So you get kind of those hit or miss storms. This is not that type of pattern. I mean, we're moving into mid-October and now it's all about low pressure systems. Are you near a low pressure system or are you not? And that's gonna make or break everything. Now the temperature pattern, we see this first initial cool down, very potent. Greens are indicating 10 to 15 degrees below normal. So we see this very widespread for the day tomorrow on Sunday, October 8th. Again, very healthy looking positive PNA here for the entire Western seaboard there. And that helps to support this pattern. Cold air sticks around all the way through the 10th, 11th, 12th time frame. And briefly, when we get that snowfall for the Rockies, we get cooler air moving in for the west. This warmth is going to want to move eastward just like this. So that is what we're going to see happen here. Pretty classic stuff. And again, this is a pretty transitionary pattern. We see this from time to time. So look, the warmth moves to the east, but look behind it. I mean, we already have our next positive PNA pattern developed. This is by the 14th here, which is going to be Saturday. And we see the cold air already diving southward for the plains here. So that is going to continue to move eastward. And what we get is another eastern cool down here for the late weekend on the 15th into the 16th and even the 17th here with no real end in sight for this very strong positive PNA pattern outside of that little recycling it does but we very quickly move back into this type of a pattern. 
Again, let's take a little bit of a long-range look here real quickly. Cold from the 8th through the 13th. Cold from the 13th through the 18th. Cold from the 18th to the 23rd, although we get some cold air moving in for the west as well. Now the 23rd through the 28th, we continue to see colder temperatures in the east. 28th through the 2nd, this is when the model gets a little bit iffy. We see cold from coast to coast, probably not going to happen that way. This is multiple mo members of this model giving their own opinion, and then we're seeing the mean average of that. So when they all start to disagree, you oftentimes see weird stuff like this. So take this with a huge grain of salt, or I guess I should say a small grain of salt. This pattern, however, the first through the sixth does look a little bit more congruent with something that's possible. We see a little bit more warmth in here, colder air clearly for the east. That is a little bit more of a realistic pattern. Although only time will be able to tell, we have to wait and see. We're gonna track this with you guys daily because we do upload every single day. So be sure to subscribe for daily uploads just like this one. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.